show, of course, with Michelle Cummins and myself, Curtis Pope. All right, Michelle. So we uh, gave some news about accessibility there and how that could be changing in the province. What do we got for segment number two? Lots of exciting stuff ahead of us, Curtis. Exciting stuff. We're talking about termination of land use contract. Well, termination, Uh-oh. that sounds like a pretty, uh, you know, you know, important word. Yeah, termination, cut off, no more, done. You're with. done. You're, you're, you're done. <laughs> it is so true. And so uh, that's the LUC. So a lot of people are like, oh, I want to buy an LUC lot. I want to buy an LUC lot. And we have a lot of that in Abbotsford. We have a lot of that in uh, quite a few municipalities. So what is a land use contract and what does a termination of it mean? So the land use agreements between local governments and landowners is going to be cut off. Municipalities and regional districts may enter into phased development agreements and housing agreements with landowners. In the past, they could enter into these land use contracts. And land use contracts were allowed in BC between 1971 and 1978. So between the time I and you were born. Hey, easy now. Don't give away too much. <laughs> As a form of site-specific contractual agreement between local governments and landowners, the intent was to allow more flexibility than traditional zoning. And these contracts were registered on land title, and they could be amended or discharged in the following ways. One, by bylaw at any time with the agreement of the local government and the landowner. And two, in the manner specified in the contract. So when the land use contract legislation was repealed in 1978, the existing contracts remained in place. However, no new contracts could be created after that time. Now, in 2014, which to me just seems like yesterday, but, you know, it's been a while now. So in 2014, the Local Government Act was changed to terminate all land use contracts by June 30th of 2024 giving local governments time to ensure that zoning and other bylaws are in place when the land use contracts terminate. The legislative change provides two termination options. The termination option that is used may have different requirements for matters such as public hearings, notification procedures, and filings related to land titles. If land, a building, or other structure is being lawfully used under the land use contract and the use would not apply under the new bylaw, the use may continue as non-conforming use. So that's a lot like, you know, before the setbacks were in place, there's a lot of older homes that are legally non-conforming. When you hear that word, it's because they were built before the new bylaws came in place. But if they ever burned down or something happened to them, you would not be able to rebuild in the same location. Thus far, and you have to be careful as a buyer, you want to make sure that if you can't rebuild it in that location, can you build it within the lot uh, dimensions? You know, where would you Uh, place it? What if it's a smaller lot? What if there's a creek running through it? What if it's against a major street, which has shorter setbacks than if you were adjacent to, let's say, just another property owner? But still, all of those things you have to really consider. Is it on septic and well, and where are those locations? How close can you be? All the stuff that you have to consider. So if you have an older house or you're thinking of buying a place that is legal, non-conforming, and the legal part just means it's allowed to be there as long as it's there, but you can't get out any new building permits. You can't build. You can't. Uh, you can't extend onto those properties. If if the let's say deck uh, gets destroyed in a fire or in another way, you can't get a permit for another deck if it's still if it's within that um, new zoning uh, setback. If it's in the that. So, anyways, enough about that. That's what that means. Certain conditions may apply. So, contact your local government for more details. Now, an early termination option allows local governments to actually terminate land use contracts before the June 30th or 2022. So they all have to be ended by June 30th, 2024. But governments can start now to phase them out, uh, providing zoning is in place and certain requirements are met. Uh, So the city of Surrey plans to discharge land use contracts before the date. So they've been working on that. 
Um, and and they've been uh, working with landowners. They have to go through the neighborhood. Um, so let's let's move on though to the relationship between LUCs and zoning. So if a property lies within a, the boundaries of an LUC, all land use regulations are prescribed in the LUC. Nevertheless, all properties in Surrey are assigned a zoning bylaw in its you know, if you care, 12,000 zone, uh, including those properties that are governed by LUC. So the zone assigned to a property that is regulated by an LUC is referred to as an underlying zone. Although all properties are regulated by LUCs have underlying zoning, the underlying zoning is to provide a general guide and has absolutely no effect on the land uses, density, or building siting. So once an LUC is terminated, the underlying zoning for the property automatically comes into effect. However, there are properties within some LUCs that do not correspond well to the underlying zoning that has been assigned to the property or that contain uses that are not equivalent to the uses or mix of uses contained within existing zones under that zoning bylaw. So in such instances, in conjunction with the termination of the LUC, these properties will be rezoned to either a more appropriate zone under zoning uh, under the zoning bylaw or to a site-specific comprehensive development. So definitely check in if you have a, a property that's within the LUC, if you bought it because it was an LUC lot, definitely keep in mind that that 2024 date is going to come up sooner than you think. Last week went away in the blink of my eye, so was the next couple of years. So <laughs> get, get prepared for that. And uh, so there's some frequently asked questions that I thought I would uh, bring up about that. So one is uh, for the properties with underlying single-family residential zones. Does the city require the consent of the owner of the property before an LUC can be terminated? Well, that's a no. Recent legislation allows the city council to terminate LUCs without the consent of the property owner. Will I be notified if city council proposes to terminate the LUC on the property on which any home is located? The answer is yes. Once a planning report with respect to the termination of the specific LUC has been presented to council, and once council has given first and second readings to the LUC termination bylaw, all property owners and tenants within the LUC to be terminated will receive written notification by the city clerk. So all property owners and tenants of property within 100 meters of the LUC proposed to be terminated will also be notified by letter as well. Additionally, notifications will be placed in the local newspaper to appraise the general public of the proposed LUC termination. Uh, property owners and tenants within the LUC surrounded or surrounding property owners and tenants in the general public all have the right to make their opinions known either in person or in writing uh, at the public hearing um, held by the city. So the next question frequently asked, does the LUC termination mean that the city is going to redevelop my property and that I will have to move? Well, no. The city of Surrey has no intention of redeveloping your property and you can continue to reside in your current property as long as you wish. Now, these frequently asked questions are because Surrey has a very much an action plan to be terminating them prior to 2024. They do have more frequently asked questions than other municipalities when I was researching this. So this is where I got these uh, questions from, just so you know. So does the LUC termination mean that I will be required to make changes or upgrades to my existing dwelling so that it conforms to underlying zoning? No, you will not be required to make any changes or upgrades to bring your existing single-family dwelling in compliance with the underlying zone that will regulate your property once the termination of the LUC on your property comes into effect. Another question, will an LUC termination have an impact on the assessed value on my property and on my property taxes? No, you don't have to worry about that. It is not anticipated that terminating the LUC currently regulates your property will have any effect or impact on either the assessed value or the city property taxes. Does an LUC termination make it easier for a developer to redevelop my property? Well, no. 
any developer who wants to develop your property will first have to obtain your consent to allow any redevelopment of your property to move forward. If the developer receives your consent, the developer will still have to submit a land development application to the city. So there you go. And when an LUC termination bylaw is adopted by council, does the underlining zoning come into effect immediately? The answer is no. LUC termination bylaws come into effect one year after they are adopted. During the one-year period, the rules and regulations of the LUC that is being terminated will continue to apply. So there are some of the questions that are frequent. Uh, If you have any more, you know, feel free to call an official about this, (laughs) Uh, and uh, and I I I can connect you if you need that. Uh, But there you go. That's a lot about, and that's happening everywhere in BC. So not you know, city of Surrey has this action plan, but many others um, are moving forward with that as well. So the city of Surrey seems to be really proactive in a lot of a lot of things. but yeah, so there you go. Um-